What's up, what's up everybody? Welcome to another video. Hopefully you guys are doing good today. It is almost the weekend. Uh, I'm gonna talk about something today that is a new discussion. A new discussion that may start some controversy for people and then also might be exciting for people. So with that being said, let's talk about weapon customization in Halo Infinite. The reason why I believe this will be a thing is simply because of the fact of what we saw in the images, right? More than ever now, we're seeing more detail on weapons because of the slip space engine, next gen, et cetera, et cetera. Although Halo Infinite is coming to previous consoles, I will say that the weapon models look increasingly detailed than we've ever seen before. And, and because of that, especially, let's just pull up the battle rifle right here. When we look at the side of the battle rifle on the left side, the railings are much more emphasized than they ever were before. That on the side actually looks like an area where a laser pointer could go, um, a potential stabilizer like they had on the assault rifles in Halo 5, or you know the scopes up top where a variety of different scopes could be created to put on the battle rifle. This game is all about being able to create a Spartan in an experience that is truly, uniquely you. And all the pieces of marketing when it's come to Master Chief, it's all about you stepping inside the suit and becoming the Spartan. And when it comes to the armor customizations and the vehicle customizations, what backs up this claim about the actual weapons themselves is the fact that vehicles will have armor coatings. You'll most likely be able to change a variety of different things when it comes to the, the vehicles themselves. When it comes to the Spartans, we've seen customization to an extent already with the armor coatings, but I believe you'll be able to change, like we've seen already, the and, and like we've seen in MCC, the arms, the legs, the undersuits, the visors, the 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 overall you know armors on your Spartans, and, and probably a variety of different things within the armors or on the armors of your Spartan. So it wouldn't be far fetched for me to believe that armor customization, vehicle customization, would be backed by weapon customization. We we already know that weapon charms are coming to this game. So just think about it. Also, when it comes to something that the game can monetize since it is free to play and since an audience from Fortnite and from Call of Duty and a variety of other uh, games and platforms are not going to be able to experience Halo for free. What did what did they expect? What do they like? And, and this is where the controversy comes in, right? It's like, is Halo following trends? Is it just jumping on the bandwagon with all these other uh, game companies? No, I think that Halo is just evolving. Uh, instead of dying. I, I think that it's going back to a lot of the nostalgic roots of the art style, of the gameplay, of the world. Like they've given the community so much of what it's wanted, but it needs to grow in certain ways. So I, I respect 343 for, for always pushing the boundaries, but also re retracting on a lot of things that were a little outlandish. But I do believe like, for instance, when you look at this battle rifle, the emphasis on these railings, I believe there will be different scopes. Uh, and then I believe there will be attachments like lasers and flashlights and whatnot. So moving on to this next weapon, the Needler. I love this look. The, the purple is incredible. It, it looks classic, it feels classic, but it has the modern touch to it. So I'm super happy about this. If you actually zoom in onto the Needler, what you'll see is actually hexagons in the coating of this needler, and as well as where the needles are coming out of these holes, they're hexagons too. So whoever's designed Halo Infinite is obviously really into hexagons. They love hexagons. <laughs> and one more thing I wanted to point out is the fact that we actually don't see a scope for this, or not a scope, but an aim down sights for this needler, which is, which is great to be able to see. I'm happy to see that that's returning more to the classic usage of, of how a needler uh, should, in my opinion, be used. When it comes to the Bulldog, I have no issue with this weapon coming into the sandbox. Uh, the fact that it is the primary shotgun right now is totally fine with me, just because of the fact that I, I do believe the more classic, the classic uh, shotgun is returning at some point. And I think there's gonna be a variety of different shotguns and, and rifles and, and whatnot, but they're all gonna serve a specific purpose. But when it comes to the customization specifically, look at this gun right look at the railing up top does that not look like a scope could be interchanged does i don't know what you call this thing on on the left in, in mid but um on the far center but far left center i i don't know 
what you call this, but that's an area where a flashlight could go. That's an area where um, if, if this over here right below is not a flashlight already, this is where laser pointers, stabilizers, whatever could go. And then down below the grip, I believe the grip could be interchanged as well. All these things look like they can be swapped out. And I believe in this title screen right here is where we do so. I, I, I just, for some reason, I'm so drawn to that. We saw it in Halo 5. We saw that our, you know, weapon variants were in Halo 5 in, in mass. We saw assault rifles with Covenant scopes on them. I mean, it's just, it's nuts, you know? And I think they're just gonna hone all that down, simplify it, and give every gun, every attachment a purpose. And I like that. This is actually my favorite weapon so far. So this right here, the commando rifle, has to be my favorite weapon so far that I've seen. Look at the railing up top. There are probably a variety of different scopes that you could attach to this weapon. I don't believe it's just going to be set to one. Uh, although the scope that we did see looked pretty cool. And uh, I like the fact that it, it looked as if it was more of a, a classic... Uh, not, it wasn't an aim down sights. It was... An, I don't know how to actually say it, but it just... The scope looked more classic when it fired at the grunts in the campaign demo. But um, overall, I, I think that these more militaristic looking weapons, it's not that they don't feel Halo, I just think they, they fit the sandbox better. Uh, as well as on the side here, once again, another emphasis on where a laser could go, uh, where a flashlight could go, you know, a variety of different things. Stabilizer, who knows? <laughs> um, a red dot sight, you know, I, I, but that's the same thing as a laser. Yeah, I, I just, I personally think this weapon, just from what I've seen, it it plays great, it fires great, it's very satisfying to use from, from what we've seen so far, and I just think that this is, this is going to be a beauty, and there's going to be a lot of fun customization options regarding this weapon. So second to last, the Hydra. I think more than anything, I don't know exactly how you'd be able to customize this weapon if it's even a thing, but what I will say is that the simplicity, right, of this weapon speaks volumes to Halo Infinite as a game. Halo has gone from a little too much, right, in design-wise, to really honing in on the truth of simplicity is brilliance. and. What I love about that is the fact that this resembles many things most likely in the gameplay experience and other weapon customi customization options as well as just weapons in general. I, I look forward to seeing what else is in the sandbox because if the redesign of the Hydra says anything, it's that simplicity is brilliance and that to me is what makes Halo Halo, is, is the readability of it. It's the enjoyment of just keeping things stupid simple and easy to understand and enjoyable to play. Although I do want to say, none of this is stupid simple. This is incredibly detailed work, but I think you get my point. <laughs> and lastly, the assault rifle. But secondly, when it comes to what does this weapon mean about the sandbox and just Halo Infinite as a game, look at the July reveal and then look at it now. The amount of detail that's been added into Halo Infinite is incredible. The leap is massive. So I would not worry about uh, any type of, of, of lack in graphical fidelity. I, I think that this game is going to look outstanding. So when it comes to this weapon, I don't know if you'll be able to customize this one. I think the AR maybe just is the AR. You know, it is what it is. But maybe that scope, maybe the reason why they, they chose the more classic scope is because it's, it's a little easier to interchange scopes without it looking so wonky like it kind of did in, in Halo 5. Like personally, I was not a fan of how the scopes uh, cut into uh, the AR, uh, you know, in the way that it, it did in, in Halo 5. It just didn't look good to me. But I think that it would be much easier to customize the scope on an assault rifle uh, with this variant. So that's, that's my breakdown. I, I think customization is going to go across the board what did you think about what I said here? Did you like it? Did you not? Leave your comments below. I know this may be a little controversial, um, but I would like to hear your thoughts. I, will, I, I really would like to have a positive, progressive uh, conversation around this and see what Halo Infinite can offer us in, in about, well, in under a year. Uh, I look forward to it, and I think the more variety for an individual in 
the Department of Customization is nothing but just a good thing. So look forward to it. Leave your thoughts below, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.